Okay, now that you've learned the concepts behind variability, specifically standard deviation, we're going to jump into some practice, so get ready to do some calculations. So for your first practice problem, I want you to imagine that we have some data from the first stats quiz, but clearly this is not any real data from any of you or anybody you know. We're just making it up as we go along. In this particular case, the class is our population of interest, and this is important, right, because this will let us know which set of formulas we'll need to use to uh, figure out our variability. So if we want to find the standard deviation for the data that we're about to get, you'll want to do all of these things in the following order. So first, you're going to find the deviation of each score. As we discussed, this will be x minus mu. Because we're looking at a population, we're going to use the population formulas. So we see mu instead of m. Then what we're going to do is square each of those deviations, and we're going to represent that with x minus mu squared. And then we're going to take all of those squared deviations and sum them up, and this is known as our sum of squares, represented by ss. Then we'll divide by n to get our variance. So remember, we're, we're dividing by big N because this is our population that we're dealing with, and we represent variance by a little sigma squared. Sigma looks like an O with a little cowlick on it. And finally, to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of that variance, which makes sense because we just need to get rid of that little square there, so we simply take the square root. So let's take a look at the data from the class on their first stats quiz. So here we see uh, nine students who took the quiz. One person got a perfect 10. One person did not show up, and so they got a zero. And then we have all of the other scores here as well. So the first thing that we need to do is actually find the mean of our population so that we can start figuring out the deviations. So the mean is calculated by summing x, right, which is simply adding up all of your scores, and dividing by n. In this case, when we sum up all of our scores, we get 54, and we divide by our n, which is 9, and that gives us a mean of 5. Okay, to keep on going, we'll find the deviation for each score. So for example, here we have the deviation of the score of 10. So I have here the score of 10 that this student got, and we subtract the mean that we got uh, just a moment ago. So 10 minus 6 equals 4. That's the deviation for the score of 10. And we'll go ahead and go down the list until we have the deviation for each score. And at the end, it should look something like this. So you'll notice that for the scores that are above our mean of 6, we have a positive deviation. So 4, 2, 2, and 1. For those that are below our mean of 6, we have a negative deviation. So negative 1, negative 3, negative 6. Now, like I told you in the lecture, if you were to try and simply take the mean of these deviations, you would end up with a sum of 0. And that's not going to work if we want to try and find a mean. So that's why we don't simply use that. Instead, what we're going to do is square each of those deviations. And so, for example, for x equals 10, our deviation is 4. We square the 4 to get to 16. So we'll go ahead and square each of our deviations along that list until we get something that looks like this. So as you'll see now, all of our square deviations are positive, which is going to help us. Now, in order to get our sum of squares, we simply add up all of these square deviations, and we're going to represent that with our sum, sigma, x minus mu squared. And if we add those all up for this particular population, we get 72. 
Now, again, this number here represents our sum of squares, and that's very important because we need our sum of squares to find any of our variability. And now that we have it, we can go ahead and move on with this problem. So now that we have our sum of squares as 72, we can find our variance. Remember, we're going to represent that with little sigma squared, and the formula is simply your sum of squares divided by big N, and that means our sum of squares is 72 divided by 9, and that's going to give us a variance of 8. But keep in mind, we're not quite done. We need to move on to find the standard deviation. So the standard deviation will simply represent with little sigma, and in order to find that, we simply take the square root of our variance. In this case, our variance is 8, so the square root of that is 2.828. Remember that your calculation should go out to the third decimal point. So now what we know about that first quiz is that the mean was a 6 out of 10, and the standard deviation was 2.828. Keep in mind, we're still in descriptive statistics, so we're simply describing what's going on with our population. We know their mean and we know their standard deviation. In other words, we know something about their central tendency and we know something about their variability. As we move on to inferential statistics, these numbers will also be able to give us some information about uh, generalizations that we can make about people. Okay. Let's move on to one more practice problem. This time I'm gonna give you a word problem, which is normally how we think about statistics, at least in behavioral statistics. Keep in mind, we're always interested in people or companies or medical facilities, something that at the end of the day has to do with people. So let's say that you're interested in the sleep quality of the average NSC student the night before an exam you know that Psych 101's first exam was yesterday. So you ask some of the students before they walked in how many hours they slept the night before. So basically, you just stood outside the classroom and asked people, how many hours did you sleep last night? Here are the data that you got from 12 different students. What I'd like you to do with these data is find the mean and standard deviation. I'll get you started by putting all of the numbers in a nice neat table for you. What I suggest is that you pause the video and try and get to the standard deviation on your own, or at least as close to it as you can. The first thing that you should have done is find the mean. In this case, we're going to represent the mean with a capital M because we're dealing with a sample. Clearly, you didn't ask every single Psych 101 student, and you definitely did not ask every NSC student about their sleeping habits the night before an exam. So you have a sample, which means we will we'll now be representing all of our formulas using the sample statistical notation. So here we have M. The sum of x, you simply added up all of your scores, divided by our little n, how many people we asked. Our sum of x is 69, the people you asked were 12, and that gives us a mean of 5.75. Now, if you started calculating your deviations and your square deviations, you probably noticed that these got a little messy, and that's because your mean is a decimal. So when you start to subtract, that decimal from your whole number scores and then squaring them it starts to get a little crazy. And although I didn't introduce this next formula in the lecture, it's in your textbook and you can also use it when you're trying to calculate the sum of squares. And so I'm going to show you in this example how it's so useful, especially when dealing with lots of scores or when you're dealing with lots of decimals. Now the computational formula looks like this. Very different from the one I showed you in the lecture. In the lecture, I gave you the definitional formula, which shows you, you take the deviations, 
you, add, you square them, you add them, you divide by n minus 1, and all that good stuff, right? But in this case, we're dealing with slightly different numbers. So we already have the sum of x here. We got it down here. That's a 69. We'll just square that to get this number here. And we have n, right? That's just 12. What we don't have is the sum of x squared. So that's what we're going to figure out for this problem. So now all we need to do is square each of our scores. So even though it's definitely easier, the numbers can get a little large. So make sure that you keep track very carefully. So you simply go down the rows, making sure to square each number. And then we need to sum all of those numbers so that we can get our sum of x squared. And that equals 479. I had to do this twice on the calculator just to make sure I got it right. When you have this many large numbers, it's really easy to make a mistake. So make sure that you double check with your calculator that you got it right. Now in this case, we don't even need this third column because we have everything we need from that computational formula. All we needed was sum of x squared minus sum of x altogether squared divided by our n. That seems easy enough. So we'll go ahead and calculate it. So here is our computational formula again. I'm simply copying over the numbers that we got from the table before. Our sum of x squared is 479. Oops. Our sum of x all squared, so now these parentheses are very meaningful, means that we're squaring our 69, which gives us 4,761. These are big numbers, but not nearly as messy as if we were doing this with our decimals. Now, in order to find our sum of squares, we simply plug in these two numbers here and plug in our 12 here. So we have 479 minus 4,761 divided by n. That should be a 12. And that gives us 479 minus 396.75. So our sum of squares is 82.25. So quite a bit of work just to get to our sum of squares. But remember, from here on out, it's pretty easy, right? So we're just going to figure out our variance and then our standard deviation. If you want, you can go ahead and figure this out using the definitional formula. I highly recommend it simply because it lets you see how much better it is to use the computational formula. So in order to find our variance, which in this case we represent with an s, a small s, because we're dealing with a sample, we take our sum of squares here and divide by n minus 1. Remember, that's the big difference between a sample and a population. So here we're now dividing our 82.25 by 11. That gives us 7.477. And to get our standard deviation, we simply take the square root of that number and that gives us 2.734. So all of that so that we can know that the amount of sleep that the students got before their exam was an average of 5.75 hours with a standard deviation of 2.734 hours. Well, that's quite a big range when you think about it. You know, somewhere between three hours and let's see, maybe eight and a half hours. So some people aren't getting very much sleep. Now, I don't know about you, but all of this talk about sleep is making me want to take a nap. So if you have the opportunity to do so, I recommend a nap wholeheartedly. Good luck with your practice. Have fun with your standard deviations, and I'll see you all next time.